Welcome, hello. So today we are going to do this problem, which is part of Fleet Code Daily Challenge, equal row and column pairs. Um, so this problem says that we get um, a zero indexed n by n integer matrix grid, um, and we want to return the number of pairs r i and c j, where basically r i is a row and um, c j is a column, and what we want is we want them to be we want to calculate how many are equal to each other. And here they tell us what do they mean by equal. Basically, it means that um, they are they contain the same elements in the same order. So this is we don't need to sort. They need to actually be in the same positions and the same values. Okay. So for example, if we take a look here quickly, we have th three two. We have this matrix here. Um, if you take a look, we have this column that is equal to this row. Okay, so that's one, um, and that's the only one actually, so we return that. So that's sort of the idea, and if we look at the constraint here, we have only up to 200, so we should be able to do an n squared algorithm here. So the easiest way to do this, right, is just to keep a, to keep a counter of how many times each row occurred, and with because we have only two, 200 at most um, in, in each row, that means we can, we can actually use the row as a key, in Python, you just need to use a tuple so that it can be a key. And then we can just count how many there are. And then after that, do another pass to count how many columns are there. So what do I mean by that is we could just have a counter. So for example, in our matrix here that we have like this, um, what we'll have is something like this. Let's call it counter. So that counter would be just a, a map, right? And the keys would be just the tuple of row. Okay, and then the value would be how many times we have that value, right? We have that row. We have the value of that row, right? So how many times, for example, we have 277 seven here, okay? Um, this may be, by the way, multiple, because what if we have a grid like um, 1, 1, right? something like this, then, then for the key, when we convert it to a tuple, we need to mark it occurrence as two, right? So that's the idea that we will follow here. And so in this case, we'll say the tuple three. So we convert it to a tuple. That's why it's like this. Occurred once. Then one, seven, six also occurred once. Um, and then two, seven, seven also occurred once. Okay. And now once we do this, we can just go through the columns here. How do we go through the columns? Well, we just go through j, right? We know that it's we have n values in each column. And so we start the column for each one. And then we go through each row to get each cell in the column, right? So for example, for the, the first column here, what we need to do is go through the first row, take this one, go through the second row, take this one, go through the last row, take this one. So that's what we'll do here. Basically, we'll go through each row and then just add to the column. Okay, so what do we need to add? Well, we need to add grid for i and j. And now, once we have this, we just want to make check how many we have. So, first we'll check is 3 to 1 there in our counter. Uh, 3, 1, 2, sorry, not 3, 2, 1. That's the column. 3, 1, 2. If it's we check if it's there, um, it's not there, and so nothing to count there. So we need to have a count that calculates how many rows are equal to uh, two columns. That's the what we are looking for: the number of pairs that are equal. And so basically, since here we have the rows and how many times it's occurred, we can just check each column and see if there is a row that equals it and count it. And so we check the first column. Let's check the second column, which is two seven seven. And so the second column, 277, here it is, right? Okay, so now we know that we have the column at index 1 and the row at index 2. We have that as a pair. And so we need to count it. We increment by 1. And then we'll go through to the next column, 167. It's not here. Um, and so we don't count. And so at the end, we return this count. So that's sort of the idea. Um, so let's just implement this solution here. Um, 
Okay, so we need first to fill our counter. So how do we do that? We just need to create a counter um, map. By default, the values would be zero for each for non for values that are not in the in the counter. That makes sense, right? Because it doesn't occur. And then we we'll go through each row in the grid, and we say that the row occurred. We need to convert it to a tuple so that it's um we can make it a key. And then we increment by one. Okay. And now once we do that, we can just go through the columns, like we said here. And we need our count that will return at the end here. And then what else do we do? Well, we need to check if this column already, there is a row that it equals it. And so how do we do that? Well, we just need to say counter of tuple of column. So that will give us, if it's there, we increment our count by how many times it's there. So that like, let's say in the case where I said there are, we had, let's say one, 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 one like this. Okay. For this column, we need to increment by two because there are two rows. And so this value here would have two, right? So that's the idea here. Now let's run it. Uh, okay, we just need to define n because we don't don't have it yet. So the length of the grid, and this should pass, and it does, right? Um, now, in terms of time complexity, this is O of n here, and then O of n squared here. So overall, it's O of n squared. We should we should which is fast because n is up to two hundred only. Um, in terms of space, we are using this extra map, so it's O of n space as well. Right, because this one has the number of rows. Um, okay, so that's so that's the time for now. Can we make this better? Uh, we actually can. Now there is a useful trick when you have um when you have a a map when you have a matrix like this one here. So let's show you this. So when you have a matrix like this, you can actually convert it to uh, convert column to rows and rows to column. So this one, you can convert it to be like this, which is called the transpose. So the transpose is just the same matrix, but with the rows becoming columns and the columns becoming rows. And so this would mean that this here would be 312, the first column, this column here. And then this one would be 277, which is the second column. And then this one would be one six seven which is the last column okay um and so we can convert here how do we do that well in python you could just do zip and grid and um uh, zip and then um and then spread your the grid values um and so once we have this it's actually easy again because we can just check how many rows are equal to how many rows here right because if there are just if if the row here is equal to a row here, then that means the row is equal to the column in the original matrix, right? So that's what we are going to do here. So let's have our transpose grid. Let's call it columns grid because that's what it is. Um, and we just need zip of spread of the grid. And here we'll, we just need to convert it to a list because the zip here with the spread will make it a tuple. And so let's call this column for column in this. And now that we have the counter, we don't need to do a two loops here. We can just do one loop like this. So we can just, instead of doing this, uh, we can keep the count here. But here, to get the column, we just ch go through the columns grid and we count how many um, in the counter and then we return it, right? So that's what we do here. Um, uh, so we just count how many rows are equal to this column. And now if we submit this, it should pass. And this does pass, right? And that got our loop here to just be one loop instead of two. Um, yeah, this transpose trick is very common. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, get used to it um, or apply it a couple of times to, to make sure you understand it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.